Welcome to Community Foundation Spotlight. I'm Spicer Bell. I'm the president of the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore. And through this series of programs, we try to highlight the work done by nonprofit organizations uh, in the community. Uh, today, we're going to be actually shining the Community Foundation Spotlight on ourselves a little bit in that we're going to brief you on some of the uh, latest things that are happening at the Community Foundation. And with me today is Erica Joseph. Erica is our Program and Development Director at the Community Foundation. Erica, welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you with us. A lot of new things happening with the Community Foundation. Uh, we were joking before we started taping about it being the new and improved. It's very but exciting. There's lots of new things going they on. They are. One of the things you've been implementing over the last year or so is a, a streamlining of our grants process and uh, using a sm what we call a small grants program. Um, Talk to our viewers about that. I'm sure we probably have some folks who are involved with nonprofit organizations. They might be on their boards or volunteers. How does the, non how does the small grants program work? Well, this program it was developed really at the encouragement of our grant committees and our board who want to focus on accessibility, making it easy for organizations to access the funding that the Community Foundation has available. And the small grants uh, program recognizes that sometimes it's just a very modest amount of money that a, that a program needs. Um, an organization might need a few hundred dollars to make something work, and uh, we want to make that uh, relatively easy for them to get. So the small grants process starts with a very simple letter of inquiry, and um, we even went a step further, and, and right on our website it tells you what we would like to have included, so you know what to to uh, share with us. We can review that, identify what sources of funds are available, and then direct you um, very quickly. Um, within a week or so, we're able to get back with you and, and highlight um, what opportunities are available and, and how you can um, access those, those grants. So as, as program director, you've got a variety of different grant sources, funding sources there. But so the person the organization is applying, they don't have to figure that out anymore, do they? Right. I mean, that's it's sort of the, the, the benefit and sometimes a little bit of a disadvantage with community foundations is there are so many funds that do so many different things. And our job as the staff is to know what those are so that we can make sure that we're doing what the donor intended. But for an organization who's worried about, you know, getting um, kids fed in their after-school program, um, they don't necessarily have the time to worry about which fund should they apply for, which application, um, and, and that was really the, the objective there, is to take that burden away from them and to let them focus on what's important for their organization. So, so you streamlined the process. It starts for many people with either a phone call to you or, and we'll put the phone number on the screen, or to the website. What's the website? It's www.cfes.org. It's a tough one. It's, <laughs> it's real long ones. But it really is, you know, it's, it's so easy for, um, for organizations, you know, more than anything, we just encourage them to call us or to um, visit the website. But, you know, making that initial contact can really take away um, a lot of the, the time and energy and research on their part to figure out what they should do to try to, to receive a grant from the Community Foundation. And I know you realize that often you're working with volunteers in these organizations. If, if I, I don't think I'm giving anything away, you've been known to help people actually fill out the grant applications, I think. Okay. We encourage people of all abilities. Um, you don't need to be an experienced grant writer to submit um, a request to the Community Foundation. We, um, we actually encourage people that this is a place that they can start if they've never written a grant before, then trying um, you know, through our process is a really good place. And, and we do, um, you know, we don't want to um, you know, surprise anyone at the end. We want to make it uh, simple and easy and, and help them work through so that hopefully they can then use those, um, those skills and that experience to go on and, and apply for grants through other sources. Now that's a great transition, a great segue, because another resource that you make, that the Community Foundation makes available, is, is a online grant directory, isn't it? The Foundation Center um, does cooperating collections. This is a national organization and 
um, to expand their reach nationally. They partner with organizations like community foundations and like libraries, um, and we're fortunate to be one of those sites. Uh, we house what's called a cooperating collection right here in Salisbury. It has access to that very powerful database. Um, it's updated daily, it seems like, but right now I think there are uh, over 97,000 different foundations in that database. Many of them you wouldn't be able to find through any other source. Um, organizations can come in, use that free of charge uh, right here. Um, you know, a few minutes drive for many people will get them there and they can research the types of programs and uh, foundations that may be far across the country but um, interested and willing to support programs right here on the Lower Eastern Shore. Yeah, and often uh, foundations away from our area may be targeting uh, demographics uh, of the type you might find here or they may just want to spread their reach and, and in that way reach out to us. Yeah, and, and that um, foundation uh, directory and the foundation center provide a tremendous amount of other resources and many of those we have on site at the uh, community foundation in our resource center so um, not only can people access that database but they can also check out a variety of different print and um, um, uh, electronic materials that we make available there so that people don't have to invest their limited operating dollars on some of those sources. Okay. And, and, and you personally teach grant writing courses from time to time, don't you? We do. We focus both on the programs that are available through the Community Foundation, but also on just some basic um, how, to, you know, how to create a program budget, how to um, create a, a grant application, what are the common um, components and how to craft those so that they'll be effective in, in a variety of different proposals that you might submit. And we do those on a regular basis and um, publicize them through our uh, nonprofit support program. All of those dates and um, events are listed on our website and are updated on a regular basis. Now, most community foundations, their primary role is, is basically to write checks, is, is just to give grants. Why, do you, why are you involved in all these other things? Well, our community foundation uh, specifically distributes over $4 million every year, um, you know, much of that to local organizations. And we um, want those organizations to be strong and to have the capacity to use those dollars effectively and efficiently in, in furthering their mission and we also want them to have the capacity to go out and find other uh, foundations and um, donors who want to invest in them and contribute to that mission and we just think that it's a good investment of our resources to help uh, strengthen the, the entire nonprofit sector here on the Lower Eastern Shore. Um, there are always skills that any um, nonprofit staff person needs. I know uh, just at the Community Foundation, we're always engaging ourselves in professional development because it makes us more effective at our job, and I think that's true for every organization. Most of these programs are operated under the umbrella of the nonprofit Eastern Shore Nonprofit Support Center. Uh, and uh, through that, uh, that nonprofit support center, in addition to foundation directory and things like that, you do a whole series of training programs. We do. Our calendar is always full. Um, <clears throat> You know, in the next in the next few weeks and months, we have things like um, nonprofit uh, financial management, and this is not you know a college level course. This is really the type of course that an individual who maybe came to the nonprofit sector from uh, something out somewhere else and has a passion for what they're doing, but maybe doesn't understand all of the ins and outs of nonprofit accounting. This is a, a, a very good introductory course for them. Uh, we're also doing a, a program. Um, on basic human resource um, essentials for nonprofit executives to help them identify the things that are going to make them stronger in leading the board, the staff, and the volunteers that they work with. Things like how to run an effective meeting, um, effective time management skills, how to coach others, which is so important when you're working with a volunteer uh, organization, which so many nonprofits are. Um, and we try to build these things and work with uh, local experts um, that we can engage with us to share their knowledge and skills uh, with their peers here in the in the community. Are these programs expensive? We have learned that it doesn't... That's a loaded question. We, I know that one. Um, we feel that it's important for us to help um, provide some of these sessions and so uh, the vast majority are free. 
or if there is a cost associated, it's very minimal, usually in the $10 to $15 range. Um, often if we have to bring uh, someone from outside that we feel has a, a particular expertise, um, we may need to cover their transportation or travel expenses related to that. But our goal is really to make it as accessible as possible. And so if we can do it for free and the community foundation can, can offset those costs, that's usually what we try to do. Now, you recently had a very successful what's called a nonprofit resource day that you do annually in conjunction with Warwick College. Uh, great attendance. This year was a sellout. Um, unfortunately, which is never our um, favorite thing to do, we had to turn some folks away because uh, we had a capacity and we reached that. We had uh, 50 people attend. The focus this year was on asset development and fundraising, which is an important topic anytime, but even more so um, the last few years because uh, we're all trying to figure out what is the best way to um, streamline our programs, make them more effective, and to find the individuals and uh, foundations who are going to want to invest in furthering uh, those objectives. We had, um, this is our sixth year, I believe, that we've done this in partnership with Warwick. It's tremendous because the organizations that participate, the individuals get continuing education credits, um, and it's just been a, a really wonderful partnership um, to be to be involved with. And, and your principal presenter this year, you brought in a consultant, a very experienced fundraising consultant from the Washington, D.C. area. We did. Hank Lewis, he's a good friend of the foundation, has been here many times, but um, really has a tremendous amount of experience in um, major gifts, you know, identifying the, um, the types of dollars that will uh, really help organizations on a larger scale, maybe through capital campaigns or major gift campaigns. And many of us um, here on the Lower Eastern Shore, um, you know, we may not have had an opportunity to be involved directly with some of those large uh, opportunities. And so Hank was, was really a, um, a nice addition to that, to that day. And you even had a motivational session uh, provided by the Dale Carnegie program. We did. Uh, our friend H.G. Wilson was there, and he um, helped, for, for many of us, the, um, the, the challenge with fundraising is making those personal connections and, you know, creating the relationships that are going to lead to to being able to feel comfortable making an ask. And so he provided some really basic hands-on tools to get us all comfortable with, you know, what are the things that are so important to helping, um, you know, get to know what might motivate a donor. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's interesting as, as both you and I have worked with uh, with nonprofit boards as, uh, you know, providing technical assistance, what have you, always encounter those folks who say, I'm just not comfortable asking people for money. But in reality, if, if you're committed to a nonprofit, that's part of what you're committing yourself to. And we live in an area where people want to be involved. They want to help support uh, good things, programs that are making a difference in the lives of others. And so um, it's, it's not really asking for money. It's giving folks the opportunity to, to help invest in what you're doing. And, mm -hmm. and I think it's just, you know, maybe a, a mindset for many of us. To... It is. It is very much. Um, in addition to, uh, one of the, I think one of the exciting upcoming training programs you have is, is a program for the, it's a leadership academy called the Make a Big Difference Volunteer Leadership Academy. Now, what is that? Well, Make a Difference Day is a national day of service held every year in October. And what we hope to do this year is to uh, develop a uh, group of volunteer leaders who are going to lead and implement projects um, between now and Make a Difference Day. And we've identified um, some local partners to do a, a one-day um, academy training to provide some basic um, skills in volunteer uh, management for maybe folks who are uh, involved in volunteer activities but maybe haven't led a team before. And we're going to um, work with them after the fact to identify their projects and then as um, you know, an extra bonus to, to make sure that things really keep moving, uh, we're going to make some grant money available to help implement those projects because often even if it's a volunteer effort, there are still some expenses that need to be, that need to be covered. So it could be somebody viewing this program who's a volunteer with a nonprofit organization. They'd like to help the nonprofit organization grow or provide, try some new program or what have you. They could register for this program they could get trained in how to organize a team or an mm -hmm. event, and then they could get some money 
from the foundation to implement their idea? We, we think it's the perfect circle of... Um, Sounds like a no-brainer for somebody who's, who really wants to support their organization. Yeah, and, and I think that the, the, the benefit is that um, if an organization has someone who's been involved with, with, um, with their um, cause for um, you know, maybe a number of years, but maybe as a brand new volunteer, it gives them the opportunity to maybe encourage them to uh, develop a little more and, and become the leader that they could be. Okay. Um, the foundation uh, recently was recertified uh, as being in compliance with national standards for community foundations. What's that mean? Well, we are so proud to be recognized um, by the Council on Foundations as one of the um, community foundations in the, con in the country that meets the highest standards. We go through a rigorous review uh, by a national review board to make sure that we are doing all of the things um, from our financial management process to our grant review process um, to human resources, everything that we're doing meets the highest standard. And um, the, the review process um, was, was uh, easy, which tells us that we're doing things um, exactly how we should be. And uh, it's just wonderful to be able to share that with the community. Sure, and I, I think it's, it's worth noting of about 700 community foundations, over 700 community foundations in the country, that only a little over 200 have been fully certified as being in compliance with those national standards. So, which which is really great. I, if, uh, you know, we're, I think we're all proud that in the last two years, the community foundation, the Eastern Shores Messiah, is one of the top 100 community foundations in the country for various measures. Uh, and just this past year, we were featured, along with two other community foundations, in a study of strategic planning and implementation that was done by this, the Center for Effective Philanthropy. Well, it's a wonderful um, way that we can highlight the fact that even if, even though we're not one of the biggest community foundations in the country, uh, we are a very uh, rural area, um, that we are still a very strong community foundation, and that is really due in part to the tremendous support that we get from local donors. Mm -hmm. um, the, the community foundation is built by local uh, people in the community who want to, um, you know, give, give to charity now, but also to create legacies for the future, and that's really a testament to their, to their commitment and engagement with us over uh, the last 27, 28 years. Yeah, we just we just do what we do on their behalf, really, and try to carry on the good work that they've created. Now, it, it related with the Nonprofit Support Center, uh, it, uh, the Community Foundation now sponsors the Shore Can Volunteer Center. What's the Shore Can Volunteer Center? Well, the Shore Can Volunteer Center is uh, an additional resource that the Community Foundation helps to support to provide that capacity that I mentioned earlier. Um, it's not just about grant dollars, it's not just about training, it's also about getting people, manpower involved in organizations. And through the Volunteer Center, we're able to help local nonprofits promote their volunteer opportunities. Um, it's on a searchable database right online. You just go to uh, shorecan.org. And the exciting piece of this um, tool is that it recently, just in the last... Um, the week that we're taping this show, the week we that went we're taping live this with show, a new website. We went live with a new website um, that will um, continue to be a great resource as the, as the last one was, but offer a tremendous amount of additional versatility and flexibility and really user... Um, it, it's really user-friendly, and we feel like that's a, uh, a nice... Um, uh, addition to the Shore Can um, Volunteer Center. We are doing a number of training programs for organizations who um, maybe aren't as comfortable with the new site as they were with the old to get them up to speed and um, we also will provide one-on-one -on -one technical assistance whenever someone has a, a challenge. Yeah, it, it's really, it, it's very easy to use. New look, uh, it's great. Um, I, I, just this morning, I gave it a try. I went on, and you can put in a keyword in your zip code. I happened to put in youth in my zip code here in Salisbury, and I, it, it listed 40-some opportunities to vo volunteer in the area working with young people. And, and it even tells you from, from the center point of your zip code to where the nonprofit is, how far you'd have to drive to get there. It's really, really fascinating. It is fascinating. And what's great is that you can be very general if you know you mm -hmm. want to work with, you know, within a specific um, area of interest or if you have specific skills that you want to use as a volunteer. 
if you want to work with a nonprofit as a grant writer, for example, or uh, work with them in, you know, in a more professional capacity, doing um, some skilled volunteering, creating newsletters, or doing them, uh, helping them with their financial management. You can enter those skills in that you have and, and find organizations that are looking for just those types of volunteers. Great. And, the, and, and there are always nonprofit organizations looking for volunteers. Always. So, so, so if you're just sitting back watching this show, get involved, uh, volunteer. Uh, you're watching Community Foundation Spotlight, and today we're uh, bringing you up to date on what's happening with the Community Foundation. We're talking about the brand new website just launched for the Shore Can Volunteer Center, and it's a, it's a great opportunity to get involved uh, here in, in our community. Now, uh, you don't do that uh, Shore Can Volunteer Center alone. You have a couple of key partners there, don't you? We do. We have um, Delmarva Power uh, has stepped up and is supporting us uh, with generous contribution each year to help uh, further the efforts of the Volunteer Center. Um, they're so valuable in helping to um, support the service projects that we do on an annual basis, and we really appreciate their support. Uh, we also have um, a partnership with the Governor's Office on Service and Volunteerism, and we're working with them um, to strengthen our capacity as a volunteer center to make sure that we're um, doing as, as good a job as we can in helping to engage volunteers and train them and um, identify opportunities for them really to make the most of their volunteer experience. Great. Great partners, new website. Uh, have one, uh, you have, have the Make a Big Difference project coming up. You also have Global Youth Service Day coming up. What is that? We do. That's a, a, a national day of service. Um, it's not as far away as, as um, Make a Difference Day, though, so it's, it's happening uh, in April. We're working with the Eastern Shore Business Leadership Network and their Able to Work program. People may be familiar with that from previous years. Uh, and the, the project this year is a cleanup at the Salisbury Zoo and at the Ben's Red Swing site. And it's going to be a great fun day. We want volunteers of all ages and abilities to come partner with us. and get, Great opportunity for families to come out. It is a great opportunity. You can get your hands dirty and then uh, when you're done with your volunteer activities for the day, you can uh, hang out at the zoo or go play on the swings. And, you know, in addition to families, it's really a wonderful opportunity for businesses to get involved. Um, the Able to Work program every year has tremendous support from the local corporate commun community, and we expect the same kind of response mm -hmm. this year. Well, and it, it's, it's enjoyable. Of course, we've had a team of, of staff from the Community Foundation that's participating in that project uh, the last two years, and uh, we were teamed up with, uh, with folks uh, uh, who were... Uh, uh, it's disabled, but it, the able is really putting emphasis on their abilities and, and work with them. And uh, you, in the end, and at the end of the day, you can st sit back and, you know, put your arm around them and look back and say, gosh, we did that and we're really proud of it. Yeah, it's a wonderful day. Yeah, it's really it a lot is. of fun. So, Now, the Community Foundation has now, I think, the current count, 528 funds that, that, that we house or sponsor. What's that all about? <laughs> well, I alluded what, to... What's, what's a fund? <laughs> the Community Foundation is made up of funds. So if an individual donor or a business or a nonprofit wants to partner with the Community Foundation, they have the ability to establish their own fund to do the charitable work that they want to do. It's like their own little foundation. It's like their own little foundation. But and the Community Foundation does most of the work. We do most of the work, and um, your fund, even if it's small, is then pooled with all of the assets that the Community Foundation has, and it really has uh, a big boost on the earning power of that fund uh, for that individual. And what we find is that um, this, is, this is wonderfully attractive, and we have over 528 funds now that all do different and unique things in the community, and our job at the Foundation is to, to uh, make that happen in perpetuity. Right. Um, if somebody's interested in, in, uh, in, in starting a fund, how do they go about doing that? Well, the, the, the easiest way to start is to, to call us because um, everyone's unique, everyone has a different story, and we can help identify, you know, what are the things that are important to you and how, um, how, how your fund should be created to make sure it's doing what you want. Um, you know, the Community Foundation is local. 
Uh, we have uh, a lot of expertise on existing uh, charitable activities in the community. We also understand where some of the gaps are and where there's a lot of uh, need for additional support. Um, and we partner with a lot of local professional advisors, accountants, estate planners. And so we're really working for the interest of the donor to make sure that, that what they want to do is what's actually created by their fund. Great. Very good. Um, the, uh, it, one of the types of funds that's on people's mind, I think, a lot this time of year is scholarship funds. Uh, if it, it, and I mean, it's getting more and more costly to continue education. Every year, Every year it goes up. Uh, if someone's interested in helping young people go to college, how could they start a scholarship fund? Scholarship funds are really one of the easiest funds to uh, establish. I mean, they're, they're all easy, but scholarship funds really resonate with donors. Um, everyone knows um, the costs associated with um, post-secondary education and um, you can identify a specific school that you'd like to support, say a local high school. You can also support um, students going to a particular college or trade school or specialty school. So um, the, the, the opportunity for a donor to really find that particular niche and support the type of student that they want to. Maybe they want to support uh, students in nursing or in, the, you know, in a certain um, trade. They can do that uh, very simply and the Community Foundation helps them identify what tools are needed to get that student that scholarship each mm -hmm. year. They write a check to the Community Foundation, they get a tax deduction, we invest the money and the earnings every year are awarded as a scholarship. Absolutely. Pretty straightforward. One of the newest funds that uh, we have at the Community Foundation, I know you've been very excited about it, is the Women's Fund. What's the Women's Fund? The Women's Fund is the, um, the, the, the fund that I think we're most excited about at the Foundation, at least the women in the office, <laughs> um, because it has taken off like we wouldn't have believed. Um, late last fall, uh, a handful of women got together and said, you know, um, there's, there's a need, there are unmet needs out there for women and girls in our community, uh, and there are a lot of, of women in this community who um, have been fortunate and successful and really want to make a difference. And so let's start, let's start asking our friends and our family members to, to invest and to, to become part of something bigger than, than any one of us individually. So the women started asking each other to, to be a part of it, and we have now over 93 founders. Founders are, are women who um, make a leadership gift or commitment to the Women's Fund of $1,000. And we've raised um, in that fund over $100,000 in the last quarter or so. Mm -hmm. It's really tremendous. And now the group is focused on um, getting their grant making activity ready so that they can start distributing funds, uh, continuing to spread the word and doing what um, I think is really one of the, the best byproducts of this is the networking that goes on uh, within the group, the sharing of ideas and opportunities. So it's really, um, really quite, a, quite an exciting time. It is. Uh, a new fund, uh, a fund by women uh, for, to address the unmet needs of women and girls, and it's a, it's a great idea, and I think it's time had come. So, Well, Erica, it's been great having you here today uh, and uh, using this as an opportunity to up folks, update folks on uh, what was happening at the Community Foundation. Appreciate you taking the time. Great. So, thank you. Uh, you've been watching Community Foundation Spotlight, and we've been focusing today on some of the, 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 the newer activities, events, and things that are happening at the Community Foundation. Uh, we continue to try to be uh, uh, a kind of a one-stop shop of support for nonprofit organizations in our area, of, of continuing to invest the money that donors have made available to us into building the capacity uh, of the nonprofit community to meet the, the, the needs of the Lower Shore. Uh, and uh, we appreciate you taking the time to learn about us. Uh, you can always learn more about the Community Foundation by signing on to our website. That's www.cfes.org. If you'd like to get involved, to volunteer, please give us a call. There's always room for you to help volunteer and support. And thanks for watching Community Foundation Spotlight on PAC 14. Would you like to see your community organization or nonprofit group featured on PAC 14? To get started, 
Contact us at 410-677-5014 or visit our website at www.pac14.org. PAC-14 is a great way to connect with your community.